swallow it Take me away Hey guys, welcome back to my channel So for today's video, I'm gonna be filming a tutorial today I feel like I haven't filmed a proper tutorial in a very long time But I'm gonna be showing you how I created this eye look that I'm wearing today I also wore this eye look in my Colourpop palette guide video And a lot of you guys requested for a tutorial for that eye look So here we are today recreating it And I'll be showing you how I did everything I use exactly the same products as I did that day I'm even wearing the same top as that same day the tutorial is actually only eye focus. I'm not going to be showing you like my foundation and my bronzer and everything like that. I'm just going to be focusing on the eyes. That's what I always like to focus on is the eyeshadow. But all the other makeup products that I did use on my face today, I will definitely leave them down below in the description box. So if you're wondering what foundation I'm wearing, I'll leave it all down below. I just personally feel like you guys see me do my base so many times and I'm still using the same products. I haven't really switched up anything. I also want to let you guys know the inspiration behind this eye look. I got inspired by by Brokel on Instagram. She is my all-time favorite makeup artist. I've been inspired by her so many times. I've done so many looks inspired by her. She is literally my favorite makeup artist. Hands down, she does the most beautiful looks I've ever seen in my life. Her blending, her face, just I'm obsessed with her. If you guys need makeup inspiration, I would say definitely go to by Brokel because she is just one talented gal. So with that being said, if you guys are interested in seeing how I created my version of her eye look then just continue watching all right so getting started we're gonna go in to the perception palette and we're gonna be taking the shade thick on my Colourpop tapered blending brush and we're gonna be using this shade as our transition shadow it's a beautiful matte bright orange and it's really gonna set the tones for the sunset colorful eye look that we want to create so just looking down into my mirror I'm gonna start working in circular and kind of like windshield wiping motions right at the outer crease first. I always like to stamp the product there and then I'll just bring in the rest of the product right in to the inner part of my crease. I feel like when you're looking down into your mirror you can really see where the transition is going and looking down into your mirror it's gonna make your eyelid really flat and you can really get the product in there very evenly. Also towards the outer third, you can see I am slowly creating like a cat eye shape. This is a shape that I always like to create. I feel like it's the most easiest to do, the most easiest to clean up, and it's also the most flattering on my eyes as well. I always like to take a clean brush, like a clean fluffy blending brush. This is the Morphe MB45. You can take any that you have, and I just like to go around the edges of the transition and just blend at the edges out just to make sure the base is ready to go because if your base is ready and it's nicely blended everything else on top is going to work out a lot easier we are now diving into the ooh la la palette taking the shade sand bar on my morphe m433 sand bar does come in a single shadow that you can purchase on its own so if you wanted to just get this specific shadow which i actually would highly recommend but we're going to focus this right at the outer edge of the eye at the outer third. I'm gonna stamp most of that vibrant pink. It does take a little bit of build up, especially pushing it against the orange. It's a little bit harder for it to contrast against it. And then I'm gonna bring it in towards the inner part of my crease. But once you start putting the pink on, you will start seeing the slow sunset gradient. And I always like to go in with my previous brush with the Connet, which was the orange, because when you put colors on top of each other, the previous shadow can fade away. Next, diving into the palette, it's my pleasure. We're gonna be taking the shade Sleeper on my Colourpop E9 brush. This shadow is also a single shadow as well, so if you don't have this palette and you wanna get this shadow, you definitely can. There is an option for you to do that. But once again, we're gonna be doing exactly the same thing. I'm gonna work it in the outer corner first and then bring it in towards my inner crease. But this time, we are gonna focus it a little bit lower. I'm gonna try my best too. And I'm also using a smaller brush, so it's going to pack on a lot more density. A lot of purple mattes can be a little bit patchy. And I feel like Sleeper is one of the better ones that I have used. I wouldn't say it's like 100% perfect and there is no patchiness at all. But compared to other ones from Colourpop, this is the best one that I've seen from them. I would say like 90% of the time, it's not patchy. I feel like on my other eye, I had a bit of trouble with it, but you can't really tell. Also, I didn't use Sleeper in my first initial look. I used a different 
different purple. I can't remember which palette I took it from, but after discovering Sleeper, I just thought I would use it. You just want to use like a dark purple. So all the mattes is like orange, bright pink, and then a dark purple. But as always with darker shadows, it's going to take a little bit longer to blend out because it is a lot darker. So just take your time with it. I think with cut creases and any eye look, honestly, it, it takes a lot of time. If you want it to look good and blended, it's going to take time. I also want to note that you want to make sure you're putting a lot of the darkness at the inner third where you are going to cut the crease. The cut crease pops out a lot more because it's contrasting against the dark purple. So now I'm taking a concealer on the back of my hand and I'll be using my Vanity Planet Small Cream Shadow Brush and we're going to start cutting out the crease. Look down into my mirror. I'll place the concealer right at the inner corner first and slowly bring it towards the center of my lid space. And then you can look up. The concealer marked a line right here and that's where I have to take my concealer up to. That way there'll be no transfer with the glitter shadows. It's very important especially for someone that has a lot of folds in their eyes. I actually also learned this technique from by Brooke House. She did like an Instagram tutorial years ago. I feel like after that everyone started doing this. Like she truly is the queen of cut creases. So, but now I'm gonna take a thin, thin paintbrush. I'm gonna take this up to my crease to create the very, very sharp line that I want. And I'm really gonna follow the curve of my eyes. I'm using little baby strokes as well. I always feel like her creases look so great on Asian eyes, especially if you have uneven eyelids. It almost creates the illusion of having even eyelids because you're technically creating a new crease and I just love how this looks. It's become one of my favorite techniques to do and honestly, once you get the hang of it, it's not that hard. And also because I have uneven eyelids, I did my bigger eye first. That way I could match my smaller eye to my bigger eye and I kind of know how high to bring the crease up. That way they can match a little bit better. And then what I like to do, I just like to take my ring finger and you know where the concealer and the mattes are kind of meeting? I'm just gonna blend that out because if you were to keep that harsh line and you're gonna put a shimmer on top, where it meets in the middle, it's gonna be patchy. So you wanna like just blend that out. Also just taking another very, very thin paintbrush, like it's so teeny tiny. I'm taking this tiniest bit of sleeper from the It's My Pleasure palette, which was the darkest purple. I'm using barely any product. I'm just gonna go right above that crease line that we just created. Very, very lightly, like there is barely any product. I feel like this makes a world of a difference because like I told you guys, a cut crease is gonna look really, really nice if it has something very dark to contrast against. So now I will be going in to the Rendezvous eyeshadow palette. I know this palette is discontinued, but I'm gonna be taking the shade My Treat. I am using this Shadow Wet on my Makeup Collective number 11 brush. Just using a Shadow Wet is gonna help the product be a lot more metallic, high shine, and especially if you've done your base already, there's not going to be as much fallout. So pretty much where I'm going to place it is right where we place the concealer, all the way to the center. But this time I'm doing it a little bit differently with my cut crease. I'm almost putting it on an angle. I think it's better to see what I'm doing than me trying to explain it. When I put it on an angle, it really pulls out my eyes and makes it look more cat-eyed. But now I will be going back in to the shade Thick from the Perception palette which was the matte orange and I'll be using my Sigma E25 brush and I'm going to place that right at the center of the lid also in an angle as well in that kind of diagonal angle of my lid. This shadow is to help blend the mattes and the shimmers together and fuse them into one and it's also going to add a pop of color there as well. I always like doing this adding like a pop of color to blend the shimmers and mattes together. It's also going to bring out the oranges from the crease area as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my Inglot AMC 77 gel liner and I'm using the Makeup Geek Bent Eyeliner Brush. I'm just gonna use this to line my upper lash line. And then once you have that liner down, I'm going back in to the Rendezvous palette taking the shade Let's Do It. But I know for sure this shadow is a single shadow, so you can get this black on its own. I'm taking my Makeup Collective number no. 5 brush, and I'm just going to smoke out that outer edge of the wing liner right into the outer third of my eye, just rubbing it back and forth, mainly just smoking the outer corner out. We're not going to be creating a smoky wing, but I'm going to bring it up into an angle. I'm just switching to a pencil brush. This is the Sigma E30, I believe. 
And now I'm just going to tight line my upper lash line. You still can see a bit of my skin. I just want to cover that up. So now we're going to start focusing on the lower lash line. I'm going back in to the Ooh La La palette, taking the shade Sandba on my Sigma E55 brush. I'm going to wash this on my lower lash line, just stopping it in the center. And I'm also going to connect it at the outer corner as well. We're putting this pink on the lower lash line is going to help bring out the pinks a little bit that was on our lids that kind of got washed away. So it's a really great way just to bring that shadow back out again. And then going back into the shade Thick once again on my Sigma E20 brush. I'm going to work this in in the inner third of my lower lash. And where they meet, you kind of just mesh them together and they just blend so easily into each other. So now that we have our lower lash line on, I'm just going to take my sponge and a bit of translucent powder. This is the Colourpop one. And this is going to help clean up the outer edge just to make it a little bit more sharp. It kind of like erases it a little bit, not completely, but it does help. And I'm using the flat side of the sponge. And we're just going to leave it on for like that for a couple of minutes and just let it do its thing. So we can move on to the inner corner now. Taking the Yes Please palette, I'm going into the shade Mischief on my Makeup Collective number 10 brush. I'm going to pop this right in the inner corner of my eye as a base. When you're using Mischief like this, you really do need to build it up. From the same palette, I'm going to take the shade Butter Cake on my Sigma E05 brush, which is like a very small synthetic brush. I'm also using this shadow wet, and this shade is such a true yellow gold that it complements Mischief so nicely. And it's really going to make that inner corner pop. This metallic is a little bit more chunkier, so you just want to be a bit more careful. There will be a fallout with this one. I'm going to place that right at the center of the matte yellow. And for the last and final step, I'm going to be taking the Colourpop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Punch. And I'm going to use this in my lower lash line to really bring out that yellow inner corner. Just quickly taking a little bit of Let's Do It from the Rendezvous palette, which is the black eyeshadow. I'm just going to lightly... Go underneath my lower lash line with this black at the outer corner just to define it a little bit, you know? I feel like it needs a little bit of definition there. And now time to pop on my lashes. I decided to go with the Bedore lights because this is what I wore the first time I wore it. So I thought I would just do everything the same. Iconic lights would be really nice as well. Alright guys, so this is the final look completed. I hope you guys liked it and found this very, very in-depth tutorial helpful. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and also let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you like these kind of videos? Do you want me to do more of them? Just let me know your feedback on the eye look and on the style of this video as well. I feel like I haven't done a tutorial in so long, just like a tutorial on one eye look. I feel like I'm always doing three demo looks and sometimes they're not as in-depth like this one so I would like to do these here and there but let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and that is pretty much it for today's video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!